Hi! In this video, we'll learn about top-down design and decomposition. So to recap, we use functions in our programs to break down our program into smaller parts, to avoid repeated code, and to make our program more readable. So I want to talk about a strategy that helps us figure out what functions we need to write to solve a problem. It's a problem-solving strategy. It's known as top-down design. So the idea with top-down design is we take a big problem and we break that big problem down into several smaller problems. And then for each of those smaller problems, we break those down into even smaller problems. And we keep breaking these problems down until eventually we get to a point where we have something as simple as moving and turning left. So even though we start with this big problem that might seem complicated, by breaking the problem down into smaller problems and solving each of these smaller problems, we make our program much more manageable and the solutions much more clear. So for example, say we're making a movie. That's a big task. Like, where do you even start making a movie? There's so many things to do. Well, we can break it down into several separate tasks. We need to write a script. We need to hire a cast and crew. We need to film the movie. We need to edit the movie. But each of those are pretty big tasks in and of themselves. We can break those down even further. So for filming the movie, we might break that down into filming scene one and filming scene two into filming scene three. And we can break the script down into scripting the different scenes. And eventually, we get to a task so simple that we can do it with one function. So why do we call it decomposition? Well, decomposition means breaking your program down into small, manageable parts that are easy to understand. We decompose large, messy functions into several small, simple functions. It's all about program readability. Remember this example earlier where we had this start function that had all of our commands and it was very hard to read and understand what's going on. We break down, we decompose the different parts of this function, split those out into their own functions, and now we have a much more readable program. Instead of all these moves and turn lefts, we have a much more high level top-down design approach where we go to the pile, we pick up the pile, and we come back to start. Then we go in and we actually write go to pile, and maybe that involves some even smaller problems inside there. But at a high level, we've solved the program right here just by going to the pile, picking up the pile, and coming back to start. We just have to define each of those functions. So top-down design helps us solve large, complicated problems. It keeps our code simple and readable, and it allows us to collaborate by splitting up the problem into sub-problems that can each be solved and tested independently. So a program like this would be very easy to split up into teams and say, okay, you take go-to pile, you'll, you'll solve that sub-problem. I'll take the pickup pile problem, and someone else can take the come back to start problem. This way we can collaborate when we're building our programs, we can split up tasks, and people can work on different things that together make the whole program. This program would be very hard to collaborate on because there's code going everywhere and it's hard to figure out where one job ends and the next begins. Whereas this is nice and clean and split up into manageable pieces that can each be worked on separately. So that's top-down design and decomposition. Let's see this in action in a real program. So here we have a problem called Hurdle Carol, where Carol starts in the bottom left corner of the world and needs to jump over these hurdles and end up in the bottom right corner. So this is where Carol needs to end up. So this is a pretty complicated program, and rather than just diving in and starting to type out moves and moves and turn lefts, I'm going to start by breaking this large problem down into several sub-problems using top-down design. So to start off with, our start code needs to go in the start function. This is where our program begins. So without writing any moves or turn lefts, at a high level, what I need Carol to do is first move to the hurdle. So I'm going to call a function called move to hurdle. Then once Carol is there, Carol needs to jump the hurdle. So I'll call a function called jump hurdle. Okay, now Carol's here, Carol needs to move to the next hurdle. So I'll call move to hurdle again. So here we're getting to reuse the same sub problem. If we solve move, hur move to hurdle once, then we solve it for the entire program. Again, Carol's here, Carol now needs to jump the hurdle again. So we get to reuse jump to hurdle. Hurdle, let me have a typo up here. Hurdle. And then once that is done, Carol needs to run to the end. So run to finish. And the idea is if each of these functions existed, I would be done. 
I've solved the problem at a high level. So now if we run this program, you see there's a problem move to hurdle is not defined. So now let's go in and break down move to hurdle as its own separate sub problem. So if we solve the move to hurdle problem, then we're good. So function move to hurdle. So how does Carol move to a hurdle? Well, Carol just needs to move, 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 move three times. So let's have Carol do that. Move, move, move. Let's see what happens there. So jump hurdle is not defined. So one thing you can do to test out parts of your program in pieces is actually go to code view and comment out the parts that you are not ready to test yet by putting two slashes in front. And then Carol will skip those lines. So we're just going to test out move to hurdle and see if that works. Awesome. So Carol got there. Now Carol needs to jump the hurdle. So let's try that. Go back to block view. A new function, jump hurdle. So to jump a hurdle, Carol needs to turn, move over. So we'll start with the turn left, and then move. And that'll put Carol right here. And Carol needs to turn right and move again. So turn right and move. And then turn right one more time. So Carol's facing south. Move again. So Carol's back on the first street. And then turn left to face east. So now, if turn right works, then we've solved jump hurdle. Fortunately, turn right is not yet defined. Ooh. Turn right is not yet defined, but that's fine because jump hurdle works as long as turn right works. So now let's go deeper. Let's solve this further sub problem of turning right. And now we're getting very simple. Turning right is a very simple problem. All we have to do, we've seen this before, is turn left three times. So let's try this. Carol ran to the hurdle. Now Carol is jumping the hurdle. Awesome. So jump hurdle works. Now we just have to move to the next hurdle and jump the next hurdle. And Carol should end up here. Let's see if that works. Awesome. So by solving this jump hurdle and move to hurdle once, we got to reuse it and reuse that code. Now lastly, we need to run to the finish. So let's uncomment this line and define the run to finish function. And to run to finish, all Carol needs to do is move, 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 move four times. So move, 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 move. Let's try this. There we go. So that is how we can use top-down design to simplify the problem-solving process, solve the program at a high level, and then go deeper and solve each of the sub-problems. Now it's your turn to try it out.